so excited (laughs) so excited that you're on this podcast because you are one of my favorite people (laughs) in the industry and you have big things happening uh spencia baker is my guest today on all hearts and remember where we first met yes i met you at the white house yeah but we we just go to the white house we just go (laughs) every now and then we like to swing by and do a concert and then just go um, but yeah, I, that was the first time I heard you perform. And then I remember, uh, when we officially met that you s- told me that you had just done a song with CC and that I sort of reminded you of her. And then I knew at that point that we were going to be friends because all my life people have always used that reference. And it's always such an honor when people say that. So, um, I immediately felt a connection with you. Um, and I will say that one of the things I liked about you is that the you complimented my talent, but then you also followed it up with with action and you know um, really kind of encouraged me and, and poured into me and gave me advice freely. And that is very, very hard to find in this industry. So I have to say thank you for that. But you know, I, I'm used to seeing you on the piano and now I'm, I'm looking at you uh, with this podcast, so. I know, it's so much fun to be able to talk to people like you because I learned so much. Yeah. Because creatively, we're all unique. Yes. And there's not one of us that's the same. And, and you have, I mean, you're on fire. I mean, I met you at the White House. Yes. Your voice is unbelievable. You actually were a contestant on The Voice years ago. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you started by doing gospel music. Your family moves to Texas. You start an interest in, is that the, is that why you were interested in country music? Do you think it's because you, you, you were born in what, New Hampshire? And then you guys. I was, yes, I was born Texas. in Hampton, Virginia. I don't remember much about it because right. I was only there for a short amount of time. So I spent most of my life in Texas. So I brand myself as a Texas girl. Um, it's possible that that's the reason maybe uh, subconsciously why I love country, but yeah. it, it was really played in, in my house at a young age. Okay. So I, I think it's just innately in my blood, but um, I grew up on gospel music primarily and okay. sort of saying that the whole front half of my life. So when people saw me on The Voice, they heard me singing country, but they could feel that there was just there was an undercurrent of some soul and gospel. And so I was successfully able to merge the two. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm still kind of hoping to do that even now. So your parents are both, I mean, they're military. I, they're amazing. <laughs> People, your mother. Yeah. Is <laughs> I know my mom. No, my mom is the smartest person ever um, besides you, Paul. But anyway, yeah, she's the smartest person person but she's also not afraid to learn or or to dive into the deep Mm -hmm. which is why she my mom also manages my career so she's mom and she's momager and she didn't have a lot of what'd you say i like having like you know business and family well it's a that's a huge part of my story right it's the it's the talent portion and all the stuff i've been through in the industry but then it's also uh working with my family um my dad sort of has stayed in in the background. He's been a cheerleader. He holds down the fort while I go and spread my wings and fly. And my mom just kind of is the wind beneath me, is just sort of helping me That's facilitate. <laughs> Isn't it? Good grief. And your dad's holding down the fort because that's a military reference. Correct. And, I like that we're and, flowing here. And mm-hmm. forgive me if I'm stereotyping, but is it country music because they're military? I mean, country music has a huge like military center part. It's kind of the heart, uh, love of God and country. But yeah, my my mom manages me. So she goes with me everywhere. And she didn't necessarily have any music business experience, but she that didn't stop her. She dove right in and she let God lead her 
and all of her ideas, I've always kind of poked fun at her because they're always kind of off the wall and not normal or conventional, but for some reason, Paul, they freaking work. Yeah. Yeah. And I have loved going on this journey with her because I, I never know how God reveals things to her and to me. And it's just become such a good partnership. So I love she, that. I love what you're saying because so many <laughs> artists are driven, mm-hmm. but you're saying that you are led, that you feel there's a higher power guiding you because, you know, you ventured into doing country music mm-hmm. and here you are venturing back out and you've actually just signed with a label yeah. that is owned by a country <laughs> artist that has decided he wants to put all of his investments into gospel. And that's yeah. Jay DeMarcus from Rascal Flats. It is. He owns Red Street and uh, yes. Jason Crabb is part of that. And Jason's Avalon. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. Avalon, one of the biggest gospel groups ever. These, these mm-hmm. are solid people and you just signed. So congratulations. Yes. And they're nice people behind the scenes too. A little top secret from me right there for you. Um, but yes, <laughs> thank you. I, uh, a lot of people don't know that I was signed to Interscope when I was 12 yeah. Yeah. and released my first gospel record at 14. And then I, I was in the deep of the music industry. I traveled overseas. I did everything you could think of. And then the label and I parted ways and um, we ended up moving to Nashville for five years uh, because I wanted to stay around music and musical people. And I wanted to still feel like my blood was pumping for the industry and I didn't want to give up. And uh, somewhere along my journey in Nashville, I, I lost, I lost the passion for music I lost the fire um, that I had once had a lot of that was me growing up uh, becoming a young woman the other parts of it were this industry is a lot of work I know it looks very glamorous and you know you see the artists up there and they're in full hair and makeup and they're killing it and it's like pow but that is literally about two percent of everything else that's involved and it were all the other it was all the other parts that really um, took a toll on me so I ended up quitting music uh, for yeah. three years hmm. and had never intended on coming back. To, and I swear that to you, it was, I was not singing anywhere, not in the car, not in the shower. I wasn't humming. I was completely finished until one day my mom and I were watching <laughs> the voice and she was like, mm, you should go audition for the voice. I mean, you're not doing anything anyways. So why not just go and do it? And I don't know what, what it was. I just said yes. And I ended up going all the way to the top four and it feels like years ago, but it was only two, it was only two years ago. And it was, um, it was a crash course in the music business. I mean, it was, it was people, it was cameras. It was. Yeah. And you got picked by, by Blake. Yeah. Team Blake, Blake Shelton. What was that like working with him? What is he like? Um, he's, everything that you see on TV. Hmm. He's down home. He's down to earth. Every time we would be like in a rehearsal off camera, he would pick up his guitar and just start playing. Mm -hmm. And I asked him why he did that. He said, he just needs to keep, he wanted to keep exercising his gift. He just, he always felt like he needed it near him. Um, I, I think a lot of people expected that he would give me some groundbreaking monumental advice. But all the stuff I learned from him really came from stuff like that. Like, wow, he, he has to keep his gift constantly in motion. Or yeah. I would ask him about a song choice and he would say, if you feel like that's where you, what you want to sing and that's what your heart's telling you, then do it, hmm. which is huge, Yeah. right? It's not some like philosophical thing with him. So it, it was very kind of down home, the way that you expect him to be, but better. Yeah. yeah it sounds like he's basically saying, don't be somebody else. Correct. And you be comfortable in your skin because you being you is better than you know yeah. you. Why try to mimic and be somebody else? And that's that's really amazing. Really well, it and it worked too, because I, I think um he wanted me to do some some more traditional country songs and I wanted to start incorporating some more modern country songs on the show because I, I wanted to show people that I was young and I was still like I can be fresh in country and he really reminded me that, you know, that's fine and that's great, but also make sure that people know that you respect and understand the lineage of country music and make sure that they, they know that you, you're for real, you're the real deal yeah. and not that you're just trying something out. You never want to 
alienate people. So he really taught me how to like navigate through that um, experience. And um, he also gave me a guitar and that's how I learned how to play guitar. I had to teach myself, but these are like some of the priceless things that he <laughs> gave to me that I'll always have. Yeah, you need to be able to communicate with your musicians and other people yes. that you're in the room with. So being able to do that actually will empower you, obviously. Yeah. So that's cool. So, but I want to know, like, you know, because we caught up at the Dove Awards. Yes. The, did, did you have a good time at the Dove Awards? I did. <laughs> I liked it. Um, I had only been to the Stellars. So that was kind of my first time sitting yeah. at the Doves. They're, they're the same, but different. Tell us um, what the Stellars are versus the Dove Awards. So the Stellar Awards are like the gospel Grammys. And so they specifically zone in on more urban, traditional gospel artists. And they, then the Dove Awards. Do they is, have white gospel singers at the Stellars? Um, really white? Every now and then. Oh. When, there, when there's one. When there's can I, one. Can I write a gospel song and be part of <laughs> You know what, Paul? Let's do that. Let's make that our next venture, okay? <laughs> it would be like, because I my label, my, my label told me I never have a, I'd never have a music video on CMT. So I went out with Thompson Square and said, let's make a video, and it's on CMT. CMT, okay. So, so you don't so then, need... <laughs> so then let's go. Then let's do it then, Paul. Face looks like I belong with the Stellar <laughs> right here. The hat trucker <laughs> anyways no but i love okay so the stellar awards is just absolutely amazing but yeah the awards the difference being it's well this year it was very diverse and there was a lot of different there was some gospel in there cc yeah. was there corinne hawthorne map city and yeah. then they had you know a lot of ccm artists hope darst was probably my favorite of the night other than mm -hmm. natalie grant because she just set the whole place right. on fire uh, but we, the kingdom, you know, it, it had a good diverse mixture of everything. So that's where the doves and the sellers separate. So I've done the sellers that this, this was a new experience for me because, you know, I had sort of departed from the music industry for a long time. So this is, yeah. this is now me reembarking on a lot of the things I used to know yeah. and experiencing them as an adult now and not as a 14, 15 year old. Yeah. So my eyes are open and I'm learning and I got a chance to actually talk to Cece at the um, backstage. Yeah. So cool. She, she did She's a second take. Deal. She is the real deal. She does. She, her heart is so good. I can tell, you know how I can tell because her gift is it. It's not like, Oh, wow. Cece can really sing. It is like, I felt that. And I feel when she's smiling, I feel that she has the joy of the Lord. I don't think it's some um, thing that, uh, which a lot of artists do, they put it on and then they take it off when they leave. Yeah. It wasn't that. And also when I met her, it's kind of um, sporadic backstage. It's kind of like chaotic. People are like running everywhere. And I remember I just said hi to her and she stopped and turned to me and like kind of recognized me. And I thought, I told my mom, that's also how you know someone is present. Right. It wasn't like a, Hey girl, yeah. bye, you know, and yeah. keep it, <laughs> keep it moving. This was, yeah. she stopped. She looked I me get in the a, eye. I get emotional because she did that to me too. Yes. She, she, she knew I was struggling with my faith and mm -hmm. she reached out. Say, you are my brother, Paul. She would mm -hmm. always call me brother Paul and like oh. we've done some work together, but this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Being, being how do you achieve that though? I mean, how do you grow into that? I can tell you that uh, there was another artist I met that night who just, who did do that to me, who went the, hey, you want to pick? Okay. <laughs> and then they moved on. And I thought, I don't know about that. Everything I learn, I take it from, from my experiences. And I, I, I hope that I never alienate people like that, that I always make them feel like I'm looking at them, that I know them and not just when I'm singing to them, but when they encounter me in the hallway that they have an experience. And I think that comes from one being um, in your word and two being humble and three, just know, knowing who you are. And, and um, something I was sharing with my mom the other day was something I realized is we sort of go um, on stage like we are 
popping. Like we are the best. Oh my gosh, I'm a singer. I'm gonna put in my in-ears and I'm gonna be real glamorous. I'm gonna kill it right now. But then, you know, you have to kind of shut that part off because the truth is, is we're not that important that we're all vessels that God is using to do something. Yes, you have the gift. You should take care of it. You should nurture it. Um, but at the end of the day, you're, you're a vessel. And so it's important for us to remember that. And I think artists like CC and other artists that I've met, they have a good grip on that. Yeah. So they're not so consumed with their own accomplishments. They can't look you in the eye and yeah. say hi. Um, but yeah. yeah I, I love that. I think so many of us are trying to climb. Oh my God. Yeah. She, she just kind of soars and looks for people like Jesus would. Yeah. The interaction, the one by one, the, the, you know, the, the people that may not normally get the, the, the love she, she seeks that out, out of her own pleasure, I think. Mm -hmm. And Mm. and that's, that's, what's beautiful. And I think it is rare for artists to achieve that, you know, but you you have that same energy. You have that same ability to smile and draw people in. And that is a gift. That is a huge gift. And then you complement that with the voice in the music. And it's obvious why you did so well on the voice and why you're headed where you are. But I want to know the switch from country music, because the whole time when you were doing country music and I was with the label that does a lot of country music and we were writing a little bit, you talk about the Lord constantly. (gasps) So I was always like, I don't think (laughs) think she's going to do this. She she's fighting a calling. Mm -hmm. So what was it that made you finally realize, okay, I did my country thing. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm going to do a little, I'm going to go a little higher. <laughs> I um, have always loved country music and uh, I rekindled my love for it while I was in Nashville. And it was with artists like Miranda Lambert and Chris Stapleton who, who could clearly and articulately and musically tell a story. So I think I was connecting to that because I was so, so, so much struggling with my purpose. And so country music was there for me in that moment. And so when I did the voice, um, it it was, it was authentic. It it was where I was at in the moment. Um, Country music is also in my roots along with gospel. And so I think people heard a little bit of both. Um, but because gospel is who I am and it's undeniable in my voice, um, I've always had that as an undercurrent. So I, when COVID hit, it allowed me to sort of hit the reset button as it did for a lot of people and to sort of reevaluate what it is exactly I was doing. I want to say I love country music and I love singing it and that will never, ever go away. But I think we can have some kind of direction going and some kind of flow that we think we're supposed to be on. And God can come in and go, mm, nah, we're going to we're going to the left. OK, and I think he had to do that with me and he did it slowly. Um, it wasn't like a, uh, I woke up one day and said, I'm, I think I'm going to go back to my roots and, and do Christian music. It was it was slowly. I uh, I was singing worship at my church um, a little bit after covid. Um, kind of in and out. My heart was still in country, uh, still trying to figure it out. And then Avalon actually invited me to do a worship conference in Houston called okay. Adore. Okay. And this is like their baby. This yeah. is their their vision of a worship conference that they want to have. And I, I was talking to my mom. I was like, I really don't want to do that. Like, I really, we need to get some country shows booked. So let's, let's go, you know? And she's like, why don't you just go and do it? This is who you are. Just go do it. And Sure enough, um, one of the ANRs from Red Street was there at the worship conference and mm-hmm. saw me that night. Um, and basically, that is how the ball started rolling with Red yep. Street. Yep. Um, but I think it's a bigger story. There's a bigger lesson than just making the switch, you know, from genres. Because I think in Christian music, you can tell a story too. Yeah. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with where you are in your life and where you dig your feet in. And I, I just felt in that moment at the worship conference and since 
that that maybe I can do what I love about country music, which is tell my story and be transparent, but I can also in that tell people about Christ and why not just smash the two together? And so that's kind of the direction I'm headed now. Um, but I, I want to tell people, I want to tell people listening to your podcast that it's really not about um, all these external decisions that you make, what genre music you go to, or what you do or don't wear, or what you do or don't say. It's more about, are you willing to even listen to God at all? Yeah. You have to be willing, because that was the only thing that kind of uh, kept me moving forward was the fact that I was willing to go. I didn't want to go to The Voice because I didn't want to sing again, but I was willing. And look what God did with that. I really didn't want to go to this worship conference. I really want to sing country and just call it a day, but I was willing. And the common denominator is at least be willing to walk to the door so that God can open it for you because you don't know what's behind it. Right. And every single opportunity that I've had has led me and prepared me for the next door or the next room that God would have me in. Even my time with you, and I'll just put that out there, that you you gave me advice, but you you physically gave me advice. We, we came to Nashville and we sat with you and we wrote a song together. I'm not a songwriter, Paul. I've, ne I've never ever <laughs> claimed that to be a thing, but because I was willing, I realized, man, I might have a knack for this. I'm gonna keep going. And now I'm co-writing almost all of the songs on my album uh, to be to be so the point is is that be obedient submit to god's uh voice at least so that he you can hear him and then he can guide you to wherever you're supposed to be and that really is the story here it's my god if i had said no to the worship conference or if i had said no to the voice where where well, would, you would i have, you would have just delayed the inevitable because that's, I think that's what we do. I think God loves us so much. Yeah. That he's laid the path and he'll keep putting a stone that you're supposed to walk on and you just yeah. don't walk on that stone. And then he'll put another one. You can't escape it. You can't run from yeah. it. And, you know, there are those people that delay, 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 delay. Mm. But you, you've always loved him. Yep. And I see it as it's just a delay. Okay. And that I love that. Yeah, he's just going to make it happen anyways because he's a reckless. He yes. loves us so much. Um, yeah, I mean. I would agree with you on that. I think it's fascinating <laughs> also, though, that the way he's leading you is he's giving you um, Jada Marcus, who understands country music and is yeah. passionate about gospel. Jason Crabb, who's done, cut, it's country southern gospel. Southern gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, southern, southern gospel. I go, I go country <laughs> gospel. Um, yeah, it's because I think Ray Charles is Southern Gospel. I think Jason right. is Country Gospel. So, so, and J if if they're watching, I apologize, Jason, but that's just. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think he's amazing. I saw him at the Rhyme or at the uh, Grand Old Opry singing. Um, um, he knows what he's doing. Okay, he's you saw him recently? No, this was when we first came to Nashville. Okay, my wife and I we went to see the Opry, and Jason was performing that night with. Chase with uh, Chris Jansen on the what? set. Yeah, 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 that was a set that night. He was incredible. So yeah. Jason Crab, I'd never heard of him. Yeah. He came out <laughs> and he owned the place. Yeah. For God, because mm -hmm. he was so, it was all about God. And, and I loved it so much. So I think you're in really good company, company mm -hmm. with the transition of country and gospel. And so I'm excited. I'm and I'll excited. be the first to say too, um, I think that I could have my heart set on something and that it, it may go on, it may go in a different direction or that God might breathe on it differently. Yeah. And I've, I've stayed open during this process, um, especially because I've been writing so much. It's caused me to be, you know, this very vulnerable for yeah. people don't want to hear the uh, flowery version of what you went through. They want to hear what you actually went through. So hey. this, this whole process has, a lot of songs have come out of me that don't sound country. Some of them sound worship. Yeah. Some of them sound like a old gospel song. It, it just, I'm, I'm open to whatever is, is coming out and being uh, conscious of my country influences. And I think it's something that people will, uh, love but they'll also kind of go what is this this doesn't have like a specific um 
you know, tone to it. This is something new and fresh. And that's what I'm praying for with this project and why I'm so uh, excited about it. So, well, I think you have encouraged (laughs) and inspired all of us with, with, I want to say you've taught, you've taught me, you've taught us about what it takes to, you know, when you have love for God, to be, to go through the struggle, uh, to recognize that the inevitable does come into our yeah. life. So, so if people are interested in, and I know they are because this is amazing, you're amazing. If people are, are if, where can they find you right now prior to that album coming out so they can watch your journey as you start to create and produce and put this music out? I know you've got some, at, but this is the stuff that like you've been. <laughs> this is, this you is know, the grown up version of my life. That's I'm excited. Gonna be uh, I'm on Instagram. It's at the Spencer Baker. I'm on Facebook. It's Spencer Baker Music. Okay. It's S P E N S H A. It's different, I'll, but you'll remember it. I'll put I the promise. links. I'll put the links in the description so everyone can go there and. and... Website is coming soon. Cool. Stand by for that. Uh, Paul and I have written a Christmas song that we're going to release to the world very soon. So stand by for that um, and many more songs to come. Right, Paul? Okay, great. <laughs> no, I have an idea of a song that we need yes. to do. And um, I don't think it's been done. And yeah. um, it's something everybody can connect with and relate to. So uh, I'm not going to start promoting that yet until we get <laughs> I know. scratching the walls. I know. <laughs> so let me know when you're out here in Nashville and yes. um we will, uh, you know what I love is that prior mm-hmm. to you being in Nashville, you signed with a label. Yeah. You stayed home. You did your thing. Yeah. And then you went to Nashville. Mm-hmm. Nothing happened. Mm-mm. I want everyone to pay attention. You went to Nashville. Nothing happened. You went Mm-mm. home. Mm-hmm. You went back to church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boom. <laughs> ah, mm-hmm. See that? Tell them, tell them, Paul. Go ahead. Tell the people. I don't need you. You're better at that. You, I, I love listening to your mother go on and on about this. <laughs> no, I don't get her started, please. <laughs> but I love it because when you return back to the, the roots and the basic principles of things that you believe, you know, in no matter what faith you're in, uh, everything comes full circle. So, congratulations, Spencer. Yeah. We are cheering you on and you. give your mom my love, dad, <laughs> who I. Haven't met, but will. Oh, I met you, Dad. I met you, Dad. Oh, that's right, you did. I, 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 I love your parents. The military aspect of it all—they have sacrificed yeah. for our country. Yeah, they're doing so much. They're sacrificing for you. For Relentlessly. All- mm-hmm. love, it. love it. I think if I told them that I wanted to be a carpenter, that they would take out a loan so that I could do. I mean, they're they're those kinds of people. If you tell us yeah. what you want to do and you believe in it, we will uh, no holds bar for you, uh, okay. which I'm grateful for. And okay. I also get to work with my mother. So that's fun. <laughs> We're learning a lot about each other. I don't know if you're still recording, but you, um, when we went out to Nashville, I think, you and I had that conversation at the pub publishing place mm-hmm. that you took me mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. And um, you were you were giving me advice. And for whatever reason, I felt like I was like my spirit wasn't taking it. Like it was trying to fight fight the advice. And when I when you asked about doing the podcast, for some reason, all these memories of my time with you came up. And I've learned a lot from you too. So I didn't want, I don't want that to go unsaid. Um, But I've learned a lot from you in the sense of you should never ever let people feel that you're unmotivated or not wanting to to be there because you have to treat every opportunity in this business like you'll never have it again. Yeah. Like uh, this is, this is it. this is the moment and I'll never have this moment again. So what would I do if this was the only chance I had? And that's something that I took from, you know, my time with you. So uh, thank you. You're welcome. Artists, we like to fight against, because we're, we're, we're anti-establishment because we're the creators. We mm-hmm. want to create new ideas, create everything. And so we're seekers. We're not rooted. Mm. And we, that's just how we are. We kind of a gypsy yes. mindset of, you know, so, so yeah, it's good, but growth yeah. comes whether we it does. want it or not. It happens. Cause you took my 